man of this entity that's coming from Edom with dyed garments from Basra. The question is asked, who is this that's coming with these dyed garments on? His garments is dyed, in, and he's glorious in his apparel. And he's also traveling in his greatness and his strength. Who is this? The question is being asked. And uh, he's mighty to save. And then it asks, where for art thou in, in, in thy red and thy apparel and thy garments? Where you been? And he's answering, uh, 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 have you been treading down uh, the, the wine press and his fat? And he says, I've trodden down the wine press alone and of the people. There was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiments. Now, this is a spiritual picture of Jesus, an actual picture a prophetic picture of when Christ comes in. But to really see this, you would have to see David in his glory days. And David, as David fought his enemies, David annihilated his enemies. I, I won't take you to all of that for time's sake. You just have to do some research on your own. David stomped his enemies, ground them like powder. David, he, his hands was bloody. We know, and we just take it lightly. He couldn't build a house for God, a church for God. God said, because, man, you got too much blood on your hands. But David was a man. He was under the anointing. He was meek as a lamb. But when, when, when it came to the business of God, David would grow a beard overnight and, and a mane like a lion. He was ruddy, but he was, you know, he would grow a beard in a split second and, and just become a, a vicious criminal for God. You know, he had a heart after God. You, we can look at that two ways. He had a desire to come after God. He loved God so much he went to church a lot. Or we can look at it that he had a heart that he was he wanted to get to the very core of who God was. And like a lot of us, we can take a leave of God. You know, David wanted to crawl up in God's very, uh, where his heart beat. And, and God saw that. He was, they said he was ruddy, you know, which means he was shot. He was bent over, humped a little bit. Not humped as in deformed, but, you know, he wasn't the best looking. His brother's tall and lanky, you know, looking good. But David was the one that you wouldn't think was going to be nothing. But he was a terrorizing somebody under the anointing of God. See, God is no respect of person. What y'all and people think that the one that, oh, he make a powerful man of God. God looked at it and said, he ain't nothing. He don't have a heart. She ain't got no heart. You know, she caught up in her beauty. He caught up Saul in his beauty. But that one right there, if they get their mind focused on me, they'll eat the devil's lunch night and day. And that's who David was. So Jesus he is the son of David. That's why when he walked in Jerusalem, they said, son of David, son of David. You know, and they were looking for him to do the same thing David did. And that was bring them out from under the affliction and the bondage of the Romans. But Jesus came and he flipped the script on them. He showed them, uh-uh, I came to bring you out from under the spiritual oppressors who got you in bondage. See, they wanted Rome to quit crucifying them because Rome crucified. Jesus wasn't the first person to get crucified. They wanted Rome to quit beating them with that whip. They wanted Rome to quit throwing them to the lions. They wanted Rome to quit taxing them and treating them like uh, pieces of meat. But Jesus said, no, there's another oppressor that I come to get you out from under. And that's what they didn't understand. So then we get over here in Luke where Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We still find ourselves in that dilemma today that most folk would rather have a nice house and a nice car, but they don't care about spiritual oppression. They'd rather have a lot of clothes, a lot of friends, and be popular. But they don't care about spiritual oppression. Yeah. 
you know. They, they find other ways to deal with that spiritual oppression as long as they got stuff. But the reason that Jesus died and he came and he gave you eternal life wasn't so you could drink from the same cup that the lost and the darker drinking from. He gave you life and life more abundantly so that you could drink from a different cup and that your feet would become literal weapons every day. You know, when you learn judo and you learn karate, you're supposed to take these and go down to the magistrate's office, to the municipal office, and you're supposed to take a full foot of a handprint, you're supposed to register these. But when you're born again, praise the Lord, and you become part of the body of Christ, you're supposed to take these, amen, and register them, amen, in the kingdom of darkness, and let them know that I've been licensed, I've been ordained, to tread. There's a prophecy in the Bible that I love to quote because I believe it with all my heart. It's in the book of Genesis. You don't have to turn there and I'll just kind of uh, quote at it a little bit to help you. After Eve, Adam and Eve had fallen, the Lord spoke. God spoke to Eve and told her that the seed that's in you is going to bruise the head of the serpent. See, she was going to carry a seed, and that seed is Jesus. That meant, meant that everybody who's born again, who carries the Spirit of God in their life, is carrying Jesus, who birthed Jesus Christ, that you and I are supposed to bruise the head of the serpent in our spiritual walk. This is, this is what Jesus is saying. Behold, in Luke 10 and 19, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Come on now. Now, your, your feet ought to be hurting because you spiritually, literally, are treading on serpents and scorpions. You are either being tread upon or you are treading. It's like being thrown in the water. You either treading water or you drowning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you ain't floating cause you you know you like ivory soap. You you either treading or you drowning. Now which one are you doing? That's my question to you. Are you treading or are you being tread upon? Because you living in the water. Yeah, the sea of humanity. And in the sea of humanity, praise God, there are water serpents. And we're going to talk about one real quick here before we, we get started. Amen. Treading in this water. Let's go to the book of Job. You living in the water. You were living in the water, the water of humanity. When the Bible talks about water, many times when it says his face upon the waters, or the waters, many waters, it's talking about humanity. You are somewhere in the water. Amen. You are somewhere in the coast. You are somewhere in the water, in the seas. You are somewhere. And you either surviving Amen. You're not just in the earth. You're in the water. And I want to I wanna, uh, bring your, or enlighten you to one of the most deadliest creatures that's in the water. And maybe I can help somebody who's here or somebody who may be watching to, to see why you're having some of the issues that you're having. And some, you've been caught. You've been snared. You've been taken captive. I'm going to be direct. Amen. We're throwing the stroller away. Praise God. We put the stroller up. Amen. After a certain time, you take the stroller away from the baby. You take the pacifier away. After a certain time, you take them out of the pampas and you put on training pants. Come on, somebody. Whether they want to or not, you chastise them because they made a boo-boo. 
You don't just say, oh, sweet, sweet. You tell them, okay, now, st you make a stink stink. No, no, no more. You you let them know it ain't. You don't rub the nose in it like a puppy and beat them with newspaper, but you let them know that this is unacceptable. Can you say amen? amen? So we're gonna look at Job chapter forty-one, and the Bible says, "Can thou draw out Levithon with a hook, or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? Can thou put a hook into his nose or bore his jaw through with a thorn?" Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? Will thou play with him as with a bird? Or will thou bind him for thy, for thy maidens? Now, it's talking about Leviathan here, which is a serpent. Which is a serpent that is loose in the earth. Amen. And he, 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 just, he just let me know right now he didn't like this. And I'm not going to tell you how I know, but he just let me know. He's, he, because he's being exposed. Leviathan is, it tells you right here, is a spirit that you cannot pull out of the water with, with a hook. In other words, Satan has launched an attack through this spirit, spiritual being that you can't fight with your religion. You can't fight him with your intellect. You can't fight him being slick because slick is in his repertoire. You slick because he made you slick. You cunning because he, he, made, he makes you cunning. You get over because he taught you how to get over. You know, if you're unrighteous, you had to learn it from somewhere. You certainly didn't learn it from God. If you can get over you had to learn it from somebody. You didn't learn it from God. And if you learn it through a human being who taught you, they learned it from somebody. And I'm taking you back to the source. It's Leviathan. Leviathan is a lion spirit. He's the, he's the ultimate serpent. And he's in the water. He's what's called a water spirit. And you can't pull him out with a hook. You need help dealing with him. Some folk got a lying spirit and can't stop lying. Lying when there's no reason to lie. All deception is a lie. The Bible says we're living in a time when people will speak lies and hypocrisy. Lie trying to pretend that they're good. You don't have to do that. When you can come to Christ and repent and ask him to change your heart, you can catch yourself in a lie. You can catch yourself trying to fix it up and make it look like you've been doing good when you're slimy. A water spirit is slimy. It's like a fish. You can't hold on to a fish. It's slimy. It smells. Amen. A discerning person can smell it. Amen. You don't want to be around people who are trying to be clean. It's because of Leviathan. People who are trying to live holy, who are trying to walk upright, you despise them. You think that they're after you. They're going to say something to uncover you. It's like a fish don't want to be taken out of water. Why? It's slimy. It's slick. He can get by. He can hide in places. That's, that's why so many are caught and trapped in their sin. Because Leviathan is loose in the waters. Teaching people how to get over, how to do it at night in the dark. They that love sin love it in the nighttime. That's why they can't, they got to be out at night all the time. People don't want to sin in the daytime. They want to do their best stuff at night. It ain't changed. Can't nobody see where you go. How you get there? You take the back roads. You look in the mirror. Wearing that mirror out, looking in the mirror. Making sure ain't nobody following your tracks. It's right here. Can thou put a hook into his nose or bore his jaw? Through with a thorn. It means you can't, you can't put a hook in it. A slimy person, you can't nail them down. If you say left, they say right. You can't put a hook in the jaw. You can't reason with them. And that's the world we live in. Will, will he make many supplications with soft words unto thee? A Leviathan spirit is, is always about words. Words that are not true. Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? 
You can't make a covenant with a person who's guided by the spirit of Leviathan. Amen. You can't nail them down. You say, will you? They'll say, yeah, but tomorrow they'll change their mind. That's why folk can't make no covenants now. You wonder why folk can't, you can't, you know, it ain't just about marriage, it's about everything. You can't make no covenant. I ain't sure. It'll be 10 years trying to make a covenant because it's Leviathan. You can't, you can't hold on to a fish. You can think, okay, we gonna do this, we gonna do this, it ain't never gonna happen because it's a, it's a Leviathan spirit. It's what's in the earth. And the sooner people realize it, you can't catch them. It's what it says. You can't put a hook in, in some people. It's because of the spirit. They're not going to let you. They're not going to settle down. That's why you marry a person, they won't settle down. They got Leviathan in them. You can get pregnant by them. You can get in debt with them. They, they still ain't go. They're going to leave you with all the bills. You get pregnant by them. You think if I have a had a baby, they go they they don't care. You think if they look this one look this they look like you. So you ain't no kid don't hold me down. It can be the woman. She'll let you you be raising it, sir. It's Leviathan. How could a father not raise his child? How could a mother not raise his child? How could? It's Leviathan. You're not going to hold me down. You're not going to hook me. You're not going to You're not going to make me accountable. You're not going to make me responsible. Just like you ain't going to make a fish be here when I'm throwing my hook in this spot. You don't spend $200 on bait to stand in this spot. And that fish go like, you can stand there all you want. I'm not coming. Care how much you done invested. And it, it affects both sex. And you wonder why. Common sense ought to tell you. Ain't no common sense when you got that spirit. Common sense ought to tell you what you should do. Common sense ought to tell a woman what to do. Common sense ought to tell a man what to do. Common sense is gone out the window because of the spirit of Leviathan. It's a water serpent. Spirit. It's in the earth. It's part of the whispering spirits. The Bible says whispers in the last day. Whispers, whispers. A snake's tongue whispers, whispers. Serpents whisper, whisper, whisper. Love to be whispered to. And whispering, whispers. They're serpents. The whole earth is full of whispering. The tabloids, whispering. The Facebook, whispering. The, the cell phone, whispering. People, whispering, whispering. Had you heard, whispering, whispering. The news, whispering. The 411, whispering. He says, verse 5, without play with him as with a bird. When you play with Leviathan, he'll bite you. Or will thou bind him for thy maidens? Would you give it to your maidens, your kids, your children, your daughters, your sons? You can't bind him. You can't bind this serpent. Shall the, shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Can thou feel his skin with barbed iron? You, can, you, you can't shoot him. You know, it's talking about how the enemy... Yes, only Jesus can do it. You can shoot him today. That's something like uh, uh, the, the Friday the 13th. He'll be back tomorrow. And that's the mistake most of us as Christians make because you have a great victory on Sunday or have a great victory in your prayer closet. You think you're good for the next month. You, the devil is a lie. You, you, you can't keep he, he coming back. Yes, Jesus has defeated him. You may say, well, why, why, do, you, why do some people, we pray? you keep praying continually because I know I doubted his eye. So he's going to come to doubt mine. Yeah. The mistake you make is when you're not completely vengeful. Just because I got victory and I got a song today, 
I'm not scared, but I know I need to look out because he's coming back. When you understand what the warfare is about, Satan hates it when I have victory. Every time I got joy, that means that he says, let's get some more reinforcement. He's going to use what you, if you got to understand that you are, you, you crazy if you think you win it. You ain't got to fear him, but you don't, you, you don't stop praying this week. Behind every victory means that you got to dig harder. You got to pray, praise harder. You know, oh, I got this thing. I got a corner on this thing. No, you're going to be ambushed. Lebanon is a lurking spirit, like in the water. The reason all you black folks are scared of water, because you know something is in the water going to get you. That's why y'all don't noodle. Excuse me, my white folks. Y'all noodle. Black folks don't noodle going down there feeling off in the water feeling off in the water under something get yanked and, and taken under that's Leviathan he's a water serpent and some of us have been caught by him but say this with me get behind me Leviathan that meant you was reaching into stuff you had no business reaching into you were putting your nose in the business you had no business putting your nose into. You need to learn to stay out of business you ain't got no business into. Come on, you, you get into some stuff you don't need to get into. You get information you don't need information about. Come on, you don't need to hear some stuff. Hello, you can't deal with everything. All y'all ain't saying nothing, but it's true anyhow. You ain't got enough love to handle everybody's information. Because with much information is much sorrow. What the Bible says. You become grievously vexed. Or you got to judge and make a decision. Look at verse 8. It says, lay thy hand upon him. Remember the battle. Do no more. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? If you see him, if God allowed you to see what you're playing with, you can't play with the enemy. Christians quit playing with the enemy. You can't play with the enemy. You can't get saved and then play with the enemy. You can't play with the enemy. Samson, get your head out of Delilah's lap. Samsonette, get your head out of uh, uh, Delilah, Delilah's lap. You can't play with the enemy. Quit thinking you all of that. You can play with the enemy. You can't put your head in Delilah's lap. You can't put your head in a delicate situation. Delilah means delicate. You can't let somebody delicately whisper to you. I ain't talking, it ain't, it ain't have to be about sex. When you know you in a bad mood, you can't let nobody delicately agree with you. That's what it does, delicately agree with your flesh. Delicately tell you you were right when somebody need to tell you to find an altar. Delic somebody need to tell you you walking in pride. You might need to see God about that. You might need to spend some time on your face. You might need to fast and pray. You might need to shut your mouth. You might need to read your Bible. You may not need to voice your opinion right now. You may not be seeing it the way it really is. That's what Delilah does. That's how we all get off. Because someone delicately says, you know, it's called the Council of Ahithophel. It's what Absalom did, did when he stood in the gate and he received everybody that came. Amen. That's what Leviathan does. And that's why a lot of us get trapped. God's trying to get us to be still. I'm working on you. You got enough on your plate. Whatever your name is, Stephen, you got enough on your plate. Even with your positioning, who you call. Today, it's homework for you. When you are strong, Peter, strengthen your brother. See? You got to stomp them demons that are crawling up your leg. 
And if you're not a good stomper, you playing hot potato with demons. They didn't got up on you and you throwing them on other folk. They shall take up serpents. Don't mean picking up snakes in church. That means stomping them. And until you can see yourself spiritually, if you can't see that, you've seen yourself kissing before, before you've done it. You've seen yourself cashing a check. You've seen yourself at the teller signing your name. You've seen yourself driving that car. I can see it with your bad credit. I can see it. <laughs> Color and all. What color it was, interior, you saw it. But what you ain't took the time to do is see yourself stomping that lust, stomping that hate, stomping that greed, stomping that mammon, stomping whatever it is that's bothering you or keeping you from getting closer to God. Until you can see that, you ain't going to be able to hold on to your blessing. You may have to spend a night and a day, a week stomping roaches. I ain't seen a house with only one roach. If there's one roach, there's a mama roach somewhere. She putting out roaches by, by the dozens. And deliverance ain't for the next guy. It's for you. And we got to become vigilant to know that your, my, 